this edition of the Entrepreneurship Through Acquisition podcast, brought to you by the Polsky Center for Entrepreneurship at the University of Chicago Booth School of Business. I'm Brian O'Connor, adjunct faculty at Chicago Booth, and joining me today is Mark Egan, seasoned investor and longtime supporter of Entrepreneurship Through Acquisition. Thanks for joining, Mark. Thanks for having me, Brian. Great, Appreciate it. great. Um, so maybe to start, I think our viewers and listeners would love to hear a little bit about kind of your background and how you got involved in this crazy world of search sure. funds and entrepreneurship through acquisition. Yeah. Um, so I kind of uh, stumbled into it. Um, my father was in the private equity business for a long time. Uh, and in 1992, Irv Grosbeck, uh, pr uh, professor, sort of the, the, the godfather of the search fund model, introduced him to his teaching assistant, uh, Dave Dodson. Uh, and so Dave was the, the, the first search that my father did, and he, he thought he was going to do that to sort of help a young MBA that was pursuing entrepreneurship. I, I don't think he thought it would be a really, you know, a, a, an, an area that he would invest um, significant amounts of capital over, over you know, 20 plus years. Um, but he did that with Dave, and, and, and that worked out well. And then the next year, you know, some more folks came and so on and so forth. Um, but while he was doing that, I mean, he was still doing traditional private equity. This was just something he did on the, on the side to be helpful. And because of that, wh where how I got into it is I couldn't go into necessarily his private equity meetings at his firm, but I, you know, he could bring me along when he was making a personal investment with some of these searchers. Sure. Um, and and I kind of just sat there and through osmosis just picked things up. Um, and what happened is, you know, fast forward to sort of mid 2000s, um, you know, my, my father is, is doing more and more of these just happen because more searchers start coming to him rather than he's actively looking for searchers, searchers are coming in. Um, and frankly, in the 90s, the model had worked, not just, you know, of seeing interesting businesses and interesting acquisitions, but playing that through, a lot of those businesses were doing really well and those investments were doing well. Um, so it just kind of became an area that he started focusing on more and putting more sort of resources to work. Um, and then it became an area that, that I, I helped him. Um, and, and I think together we both, um, without sort of looking for an area to invest more capital, just I think we both sort of, um, I, don't, I don't know if fall in love is the right term, but I think it's sort of evolved there. Maybe with a love-hate relationship? <laughs> no, 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 no hate at all, exactly. It, more just this progression where, sure. where initially, I think we were just totally, I mean, it was just each entrepreneur you meet, you're, you're, you're really kind of blown away about how um, sort of enthusiastic and, and excited and passionate um, those individuals are and how smart they are. To then, you know, fast forward some years later, you say, wow, you know, it's not just these one-off amazing individuals. There might be something more to this, um, and it might be a way to, to meet more interesting entrepreneurs and, 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 and selfishly for us, in, invest in those areas. Sure. So, um, so hopefully that answers no, my question. No, it does, and, 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 and it's very interesting. So starting, um, of course, with your, your father's relationship with Irv and David sure. Dodson, who are, you know, by and large, the godfathers of what we're doing here. Um, how have you seen, uh, as you've become more involved, how have you seen those early days back in the mid 80s and through the 90s? It's a different sort of environment now. How have you seen the evolution? Um, so uh, it's been quite an evolution because part of it I've evolved along. You know, I started looking at this in high school when, um, you know, I was just kind of sitting there in a room. I couldn't really analyze the numbers. Um, but what I did get at that age um, is you could see the people's passion, you could see their conviction, um, and then, you know, you, you could see sort of their story. Um, and I think that is probably the biggest thing that has changed is how folks approach this on the front end. So at the beginning, you know, when, when David or, or some of the other um, searchers were coming to meet with my father, they weren't coming and spending a ton of time talking about the search fund model and the nuances there and what has worked, they were really talking about themselves and they were talking about their own story and they were talking about the work that they had done um, to in, in, in really highlighting that piece of it of, of sort of what differentiates me sort of just sort of on a macro level in the world, right, um, from my past and my skill set what is my passion going forward? So 
where do I want to be? What businesses, what industries, what region of the country? Um, and so much of that that we were hearing is we were hearing Dave or the other searchers really their story about how they were going to differentiate not only in finding that business but operating the business going forward. And so now you get a lot more of folks who want to pursue the model but haven't maybe done as much work on their own sort of on their own story and their own game plan. And if you don't have this sort of personal conviction, it's a very tough exercise. My, my guess is that those early stories and what, and what you've maybe seen a little bit of dilution as, as this has uh, gained in popularity and, and momentum and evolved um, is, the, is the why you believe you're well suited to be an operator. And, 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 and really what we're doing here in the world of entrepreneurship through acquisition is about operating and creating value in small businesses. Yep. And, and, and if I'm hearing you correctly, there may have, there may have been a little bit of, lo of that lost over the last couple decades as you've been in this space. I wouldn't just say it's, it's even, it, it's partially the operations, but it's partially just looking at it holistically of, of, I mean, I think folks spent more time back in the day thinking about where, you know, where would I want to live alternatively, where would I not want to live, right? What industries do I find really exciting? What things do I, you know, that I think are, you know, might be interesting ways to make some money, but I don't find them that compelling. I don't think I would, I would really enjoy it. So my point being, I think you can now can look back at the data set and you can look at what deals have worked out and, and, and what has gone well. And so a pretty savvy person will look at that and they'll say, well, I want to spend time in, in the things that have worked out and spend less time in the things that haven't worked out. So I don't know if, if it's dilution as much, but you do get, you do get some element of, of individuals kind of recreating what has happened before. And so I'm saying from that, you don't get as, as many, you, you don't always get folks thinking about what is my own path? Sure. Um, how do I differentiate? And, and, and not just in the oper operations differentiate, but also differentiate in searching for a business, right? Because, I mean, I, you know, there are some folks that, that'll say, hey, I'm gonna put together a list and I'm gonna, I'm gonna attack a bunch of database, right? And then you have other folks that, that are, they're still gonna do that, right? They're still gonna do the generic stuff, but then they also have some differentiated um, things that are tailored more to maybe their personality or how how they do things. Sure, you know? sure. So, so you and your father and your and your family have been instrumental in in where this asset class has has gone. What has kept you sort of true to the search fund world, to the world of entrepreneurship through acquisition, and really the the kind of the lower micro middle market? I mean, I, I think there's a propensity to yeah, that, that, that be works. successful and accumulate wealth yep. and and sort of go up market. You've stayed true. Yeah, and that one's really easy to, to answer um, because, like I said, this was a progression. This wasn't, hey, we think we're you know the smartest guys on the planet, and this is the next great asset class. This was a this was a progression, and this was my father did traditional private equity. I went to Fairfield University, and then after Fairfield, did traditional private equity. And I tell folks about this all the time. And, and there, I spent most of my time thinking about. Um, and I'm sure my father does, you know, each deal is different and what is my IRR gonna be on that specific deal, right? And, and if it's a, maybe a 25% IRR, you say, right, that, that sounds good, let's, let's go with it. Whereas here, this is very binary. And that's the one thing that, that I think we, we grew to learn about the model, um, but then we also grew to love about the model in that if the searcher hits their hurdles, and they become the largest shareholder in the business, we do really well as an investor. And if the searcher doesn't hit their hurdles and the searcher doesn't become the largest shareholder in the business, and this is on average, I mean, there are some different capital structures, but on average, then it, it's at, usually at best about a 2X deal for us, and oftentimes, you know, less than that. And because, you know, because it is my father and I, and, and, and it's the search fund community, you know, sort of everyone knows each other. And you, you know, when you make one and a half X with someone over eight years and you know them really well, and like I said, they're very in touch with what they would, you know, their goals and what they would like to do, not just with the business, but with their family and all these things, it doesn't feel great. It, it really doesn't feel great for, for us to do okay and we make one and a half times our money, but they've just spent eight, you know, maybe, eight of the best years of their life in a really tough 
tough situation. Maybe in an undesirable geography, playing in an industry that's languishing. Yeah, so that's, or, that's or, maybe, or maybe playing in a, in a business that you know, most operators wouldn't even be able to return capital to investors. And these guys, you know, Impossible. figure out how to make a 2x, but really at the end of the rainbow, they don't make that much money. Um, so I think for us, it, it is where we fall in love. I, I just don't, and, and then I guess you, the other thing that you asked about the lower middle market. So I like that entrepreneurs here, it's not, it's, it's at a size where if they hit their hurdles with the other investors, they can become the largest shareholder of the company. I then like the size of these businesses that when these entrepreneurs get involved here and they become the largest shareholder, also given the size of the business and the other employees, when you say buy that business for 10 or 20 million dollars, if you then can sell that into private equity, right, at 100 million dollars, that is, and, and I'm, these are very kind of generic examples, but with a lot of these deals, you go from buying a smaller company and then you're able to sell it into a bigger situation. And it's not just transformative for the, for the entrepreneur, but it's transformative for a lot of those people at the business, right? And you get to know a lot of the people at the business. And so for me, that's just, you know, that's really exciting. Um, and that's been something that I got to see as a young kid. And my father um, saw that, made, you know, was helpful in, in sort of with those impacts and, and, and I don't know, that's just something I've always, I'm gonna start rambling now, but no, no, the, thank you know, you. That, the, 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 the people side of the business is something that I absolutely yeah. love. Um, I love it being transformative in people's lives. Yeah. Um, I love the circularity of this, that a lot of the entrepreneurs have now become investors. Sure. Um, so, I mean, I could go on and yeah. on, but uh, in the last thing I would say too, though, that, that I, I think the search fund is a model, and I think it's, it's fabulous. But at the end of the day, it's all about entrepreneurship. It's a path to entrepreneurship. Um, and there's you know, a lot of different ways to, to be an entrepreneur. So let's, um, talk, let's talk about the entrepreneur for a second. So um, maybe start with- I told with you it. I was gonna ramble when we did this. This is, this is perfect, <laughs> this is perfect. This is why we're doing this. So um, how many, maybe help us quantify, how many entrepreneurs have you worked with over sure. the, the decades that you've been in this yep. model? Uh, how many companies as a result? And then that, that'll lead to my follow-up question from-, from Sure. That. Yeah. So like I said, 1992, you know, one searcher comes through the door. Um, years later, that gets up to, you know, a couple of every year um, to the sort of 2000s, it was about 10 a year. Um, and then in, uh, in 07, we, we, you know, sort of my father left Alts Communications, his own firm. I just was back from business school. We started doing this more full time. Um, had a little bit of a small fund. Now we just invest our own capital. Um, but we got up to about 20 searchers. And now we're, we're about, you know, fast forward now, about 10 years later, we're, we have about 30 active searchers. Things have really um, progressed. And I would say, you know, that we've done well over, you know, sort of probably done 100 deals. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's been an increasingly um, active area. I, I don't, you know, the, the, the important thing there, we have 30 active searchers. I wouldn't say that we'll do 30 deals. Sure. Um, I think, you know, w w there's a delicate balance. As much as we want to help, like, and I touched upon this a little earlier, we really would like to help. Um, as many people as we can become entrepreneurs um, and we invest for a living so we like doing deals. The flip side, like I said though, there's not just our principal at risk when we, when we you know, do a tough deal. Um, and I literally, you know, my father, I'm telling you, he worries less about the principal. What we have at risk is that really talented individual or team. And their team, right, right, right. the individual so, and their team, sure. And that's something that is, sure. you know, I really have learned over time because, again, there were deals that we said, hey, I don't know about the company, but they're, the entrepreneur is a rock star. We should, we should, and they want to do it, and we should support them, right? And we didn't push back, and, and we, we've seen those tough situations. So now, maybe for, you know, sometimes we can be a little tough, um, but we really do try to push back challenge folks conviction and really you know see is it a good fit for you personally for you professionally for for your family with, with all of because we because because we'd like folks to do this you know for you know 
the deals that we've been in longer have done better. Sure, right? So sure. our, our, our nine year holds are better than our three year holds. Sure. The folks that you're, the, the current 30 that you're working with, um, it's clear that you're doing this for uh, reasons beyond just the, uh, what the data suggests from a, from a, from a return standpoint, right? Um, you're doing it to work with people, and, yep. you're, and you're supportive of the entrepreneurial community in this, in this space, which is fantastic. How, Mark, are you spending time with these entrepreneurs? Is it, how, how regular yep. is it? What is the cadence of communication? How do you so like again, to- So again, this is, for, for better or worse, this was something that I enjoyed more than private equity. Um, from, in that private equity, I, you know, I always felt a tough balance of figuring out how to allocate um, time between folks. And, and kind of what happens here that um, is the entrepreneurs really, or that team is really, I mean, they're the point guard. They're, sh they're showing leadership, right? So I don't as much have kind of a standard template that I sort of just, you know, layer over my, our 30 searchers, right? I really, you know, and, and I think my father is too, um, and, and, and we try to do good, but try to be a resource to the searcher, right? The ultimate goal, as my father says, this is a selfish exercise for the searcher, right? If they can figure out, you know, what is exciting to them, and they can go find that company, and they can execute on it, and they can become the largest shareholder, we will do well, right? So how can we foster that? Um, and that's really what we spend a lot of time doing. So with those searchers, right, some of them, I talk to a lot. Some of them, I will go out and visit businesses with them. Um, you know, go check out the company, get on a plane, do all that. Um, and then other folks, you know, I don't. I see their updates. Maybe we catch up once in a while. Um, but I, I don't. I, I can't say that I spend, you know, a ton of time with them. Um, it because what happens is is that they have ten or twelve other investors, right? And, and for whatever the case is, they have connected with them and they're spending a bunch of time with them. And what happens is it iterates, right? So that I might spend, you know, someone might be looking in a certain area where I might know a bunch about that. And so they'll spend three to six months talking to me a lot. And then they decide, hey, you know, I don't know if I want to pursue that area. And then the next thing they got excited about, there's, there's a couple other investors that have real expertise. In, sure, you know, in it's that the area. power of the community. Yeah, and so my father and I really believe in, in the power of the community. Um, we, we think that you know, there's been an influx of new investors since we've been doing this. Um, and we see that as a positive. I know some folks worry about that. Um, we think that there's you know, more folks out there with a, with a different appetite. Um, my father's partner, um, Craig Burr, and his son, Matt, um, do the same type of investing. Um, and they, you know, Craig and my father were partners, you know, forever and are, are you know, very close and a great relationship and, and, and the, you know, a lot of respect there. And, and I think the world of, of Matt as well. Um, but there, there are times when, when they will want to do a deal and, and we won't, right? Sure. And so that really, to me, is, is the magic of the whole thing, that the entrepreneur doesn't need to, to kind of say, hey, we get, we get Bill who's not that excited and Craig who's excited or vice versa. They really they, they get the, the folks within the community that, as I like, that, that hopefully share the same conviction they have. Yep, ma makes total sense. So. Um, We've seen it. Uh, uh, you, you sort of mentioned an influx of interest and capital and entrepreneurs that are pursuing this path. Um, what unique challenges might exist today versus in the '90s or in yeah. the 2000s that you that, that you've sort of seen evolve as a result of this influx of talent, capital? Um, How has it changed? So I, I think the biggest thing and the biggest question we all have is, is are we backing the model or are we backing the entrepreneur, right? And so, and, and I don't think that's something you can, I mean, you can hypothesize that in the macro, but it's really each searcher, you kind of owe that to them. Um, and that's, I think, a discipline that, you know, investors, searchers need to kind of just keep in the back of their head. And I think that's the biggest thing of just, you know, even if you're a searcher, if you, if you were someone that was going to go do this, you'd want to learn all about the model and you want to understand the model, but what, you, know, you can't just do the model, right? You need to, what is your special sauce? How are you differentiated? And then the model needs to be a path to, to entrepreneurship.
parting thoughts. We're, we're, uh, we're sort of coming to our audience today from the Booth Kellogg Third Annual Entrepreneurship yep. Through Acquisition Conference, 400 uh, attendees strong, which is tremendous. Yep. I think it's the, the biggest event of its kind uh, here in the country. Um, what can you give f sort of imparting thoughts and wisdom for the would-be search funder, would-be uh, follower of this entrepreneurship through acquisition path um, as they go forward in their uh, career decision? Yep. Um, so, the, the, first off, you guys have done a fantastic job. You know, I, I was here a few years ago, and, and, and kind of like our, um, you know, our early search fund investing, it seems like you guys just keep <laughs> scaling up every year. Um, but again, I, I think that speaks to not just the search funds, but I really think it speaks to entrepreneurship. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of the business schools and, and, and just, you know, in education in general have, have made a real push um, to, to, um, for entrepreneurship. And I think you guys have done a, just a fantastic job here. So um, I think one of the, one of the first things, and, and it's, a, it's a credit to you guys, that, that folks should do is they should learn, right? Um, so while I say you want to, you know, you want your own conviction and, and your own differentiation and all those type of things, you definitely can learn from the sure. folks that have, that have gone before you. Um, and the business schools really, um, and sort of the network of folks, that's really the sort of the, the place where you go to, to find that information and find those people. Um, so I would first do that, you know, sort of learn about it. Um, I would then go the next step of talking to a bunch of people, right, in a diverse mix. I would talk to investors, I would talk to searchers, and then I would talk to, to, to folks at the business schools too, right? Because the interesting thing about the business schools um, is that, um, you know, there, there is all different opinions and different theories and, and, and new studies and all that kind of stuff. So what, what, what is great for us, and we're fortunate as investors, is the business schools definitely kind of keep us on our toes and, and are constantly doing more work on the, on the work we're doing. And, um, and, and, and I, I know my father and hope um, that is kind of a, an energy that continues. I, I don't think anyone feels like they're, um, you know, have this search fund world figured out. I think everyone thinks they're still learning. And, and, um, and, and that's what I would suggest to folks, you know, that this is something that is still evolving. And so I would learn what has gone on in the past and then I wouldn't, and I wouldn't be afraid to 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 put your own, you know, <laughs> sort of twist on things, sure. but also get out there and speak to a lot of people and ask them, hey, is my twist nuts? Yeah. Right? <laughs> um, Pressure test your twist a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And and, yeah. And, 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 and be entrepreneurial. Yeah. Mark Egan, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks so much. This has been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our viewers and listeners for joining this edition of the Entrepreneurship Through Acquisition podcast brought to you by the University of Chicago Booth School of Business at the Polsky Center for Entrepreneurship.